I've been asked a few times how you can pass data between multiple protocols in Rational Performance Tester. So if I have a test that includes one protocol and a different protocol in a second test, is there a way that you can pass information from one to the other? So I'm going to demonstrate how that's done. So in my situation, I have a 3270 screen and after I run through a series of screens here, I come to one that has a company name. I want to extract that and just for demonstration purposes here, I want to place that in the search box of a web-based application, uh, in this case IBM.com. Uh, a little bit contrived, but it, uh, it, it shows the, the ability here to do uh, data migration or data transfer from one application type to another. So the first step will be to record the individual tests. Now we can't record these both at the same time or in one pass. What we'll do is record the 3270 script first and then record the web-based test and then put them together into a common schedule. This enables us to create a, a variable that can be shared between the multiple tests. So let's start with the 3270. We'll record a test, we'll call it uh, 3270 test. Now, if we have PCOM or Attachmate Extra installed, then we could just use those. I do not have those. I, uh, I'm going to use the functional tester terminal emulator and manage that as or handle that as a managed application using socket IO recorder and I've already filled in the data to launch the, the application. So when I click Finish, RPT is going into recording mode and it's going to launch my managed application. And to, in order to connect to my mainframe, I just have to enter a host name, select the terminal type and the port and say Connect. Now, this is uh, I'm connected to my mainframe uh, in reality, this is just a mainframe simulator, but uh, um, for all intents and purposes, this is what you would do. You connect to the mainframe and you start uh, entering information and navigating through the, the screens. And after we log in, we get into the share trading manager. In my case, uh, we're going to select a, 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 a share um, a commodity we want to trade. And uh, here we get a a list of the uh, the trading prices and I want to scrape this name the company name off of this screen uh, but I've recorded everything I need at this point uh, so I'm just going to disconnect and then uh, close my emulator when I close the emulator performance tester recognizes that generates the test and now I have my 3270 test uh, I can click on the screen entries in the test. So these nodes uh, correspond to the different screens that I navigated through uh, when I recorded the test. And the final screen here has my company name that I'm going to want to extract. Uh, let's set that aside for the moment. And now we're going to record the, the website of the test. Uh, so with that, we record an HTTP test. We'll call this uh, web test. choose Firefox as my client, start recording. When Firefox comes up, just enter the address. I'm just using IBM.com here. On IBM.com, I'm just going to enter some search value into the search box. Click the search button. Two things to notice here before we move on. Um, the value, the search value is passed as a parameter in the URL and when the page returns the value that was searched is in this uh, text field, the search text field. Uh, we'll use that later on. Uh, we've recorded everything we need here. We'll just close the browser. When RPT finishes generating the test, I'll open it. We just have the two pages, uh, the landing page and then the, the search page. Um, now, the next piece of the puzzle is we need to tie these two together, and we'll do that through a schedule. 
Uh, so we create a new performance schedule. Um, just for this illustration, I'm just going to have one user. And my user group one, I'll add a test, which will be my web test. And I'll add a 3270 test. And I'll put them in the correct order. So the 3270 test is going to run first and then the web test. But at this point, the way things are set up, there's no data transfer between them. Uh, the web test is just going to search on the value that was recorded. Uh, the way that we uh, that we do this is by editing the test to use a common test variable and then assigning a value that we scrape from the screen of the 3270 test and then using that uh, as a substitution in the web test. So let's start with the 3270 test. Under test resources, the test variables, we're going to add a new test variable, a variable declaration, call it uh, call it screen data. <clears throat> the important thing is in both tests it has to be named exactly the same and you need to select that it's visible in all tests for this user. If, if you don't change that, if you leave it as this test only, then it's in effect it's like a private variable uh, and it won't be seen across the other, the other test. So that variable now exists but it, it, uh, it's not initialized anywhere. So I'll go to this last screen and from here I can select the text that I want and I will create a reference out of that text. I'll give it a little bit more friendly name, my company name, and then finally um, I'm going to add into this test, or insert into it, a variable assignment that, ha that has to be after the screen where we're scraping the data from. And we're going to assign to the variable named screen data and what we're going to assign to it is a data source value which is the, um, the content from the screen, the reference that we created. So that's really all there is to it on the 3270 side. Uh, we could we could create uh, rules and such, but um, we create the variable, make sure that it is uh, shared across all tests for this user, and then we insert a, um, a variable assignment, and we assign the data source value, which was the, uh, the, the re, uh, reference that was uh, set up on the screen. So the other side of this equation, then, is the web test. We need to, again, in the web test, create a test variable with the same name and again make sure that it's all tests for this user and then we need to locate the place where the value is used and currently that's just going to be a data pool candidate in the IBM search page and we're going to create a substitutor there and we're going to substitute it from the value of that test variable. <clears throat> so that's, that's going to help us um, pass that information from one test to the other. One last thing just to kind of illustrate this is if we look at that primary request of that IBM search page, we can go to the response, the response value and uh, create a content uh, verification point. So let's look for that um, some test, uh, some search data here. So here's the input box. I'm going to select that and create a content verification point for that. Now the only problem is I don't actually want I don't hope to find some search value in there. I want to find whatever gets passed in from the other test. So I can go to the verification point and select that, the expected data here, and substitute that from a data source, namely the test variable screen data. 
All right. So that does it. That it gives us our two tests, um, and they're in a common schedule. I'm going to set the schedule to log everything, not just the primary actions. That way we can verify what happens here. And we'll run the schedule back. You'll find that um, when you launch the schedule, you actually get three different reports. Um, 3270 report, a socket report, and a performance uh, report or HTTP. Um, that's because we have multiple protocols represented in this schedule. Uh, we can watch this and see that in the 3270, there's one active user currently. And when this test completes, it'll transition into the HTTP test and run that user as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll check out the values in the, uh, in the test log when that finishes. Now that the test is completed, let's open the test log. And I can navigate directly to that content verification point that I put in. We'll see that it passed, uh, but as confirmation, if you look at the request that it was tied to, you see that the queue parameter contains KC import export, which was the value that we scraped from the screen earlier. So this is a technique that you can use to put uh, multiple protocols into a single schedule and pass data between them.